On behalf of Historic Holy Trinity Episcopal Church in Covina, we bring you a meditation upon the seven last words of Christ. Several years ago, our rector commissioned me to write a meditation upon the seven last words uh, to use as a fitting uh, finale for the uh, Stations of the Cross in the city. However, this year times have changed drastically, and so we are bringing you these presentations from various locations. We hope to also uh, live stream this tomorrow on Facebook. But these are a meditation on the seven last words of Christ from the cross. The first words from Luke 23, 34. Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. It is in perfect order for the first words of Jesus from the cross to be words of forgiveness. For without forgiveness, we cannot enter into that journey toward resurrection. Whether it be for those sins and offenses we commit out of our ignorance or by our omission, or those we commit in our willfulness, Jesus' words reach out to us, Father, forgive them. In our forgetfulness and in our willfulness, Lord, forgive us. Let us pray. Lord, may I live today as a forgiven person, opening my heart to you, choosing not to sin because you have broken the power of sin by your death upon the cross. Amen. The second words of Christ from the cross are from Luke 23, verse 43. Truly, I tell you, today <clears throat> you will be with me in paradise. Jesus <clears throat> was crucified between two thieves. It has been wisely observed that we are also crucified between two thieves. The thief of the past that taunts us with our failures and the thief of the future that fills us with insecurity. We need the reminder from the cross that this day, today, we live in paradise, the garden of grace. Regardless of our failures past or our fears future, we are with him. Lord, remember us today. Help us to live within your kingdom. Let us pray. O Lord, like the thief upon the cross, I rely not upon my worthiness, but upon your amazing grace. The third words from the cross, found in John 19, verse 27. <clears throat> Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, here is your mother. The presence of Mary reminds us that there are many ways in which we suffer. She beholds that son that she carried beneath her heart, nourished and followed, now to be executed as a criminal. Jesus, despite his horrific suffering, has concern and compassion for his mother. Although in great pain and humiliation, he is concerned about the welfare of others. Lord, even when distracted by our own pain and concerns, grant us the gift of compassion for others. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, the presence of your mother at the cross reminds us that on the cross, not only are you the savior of the world, but also fully human in every way. Amen. The fourth words from the cross, found in Mark 15, verse 34. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Was Jesus' cry as much a question as it was an expression of profound agony? In moments of personal dark nights of the soul, do we not feel as though God has abandoned us? There's an expression that says, worse than death is the experience of being lost. Perhaps Jesus experienced that sense of being lost so that through him we might be found. Lord, in our lostness, 
let us be found in you. Thank you, Lord, for what you suffered. Thank you for being forsaken so that we might never be. The fifth words from the cross found in John 19, verse 28. I am thirsty. Jesus' full humanity comes to the fore in so many scenes from Calvary. Thirst is a basic human need. For Jesus, the physical torment of the preceding hours would have created great thirst as all of his bodily functions failed. This man who had promised living water that would quench our thirst forever now suffered thirst so great that out of our innermost being might flow living water sufficient for us and for the spiritual thirst of the whole world. O Lord, who suffered thirst for us, let your living water flow to us and through us. Let us pray. Lord, let the new wine of your kingdom flood our souls. We need to be refreshed by your living water. We are thirsty, Lord, for you. Amen. The sixth words from the cross, from John 19, verse 30. It is finished. It is finished, from the Greek word tetelestai. It is done. Jesus had finished the work his Father had given him to do. He had announced the kingdom of God and revealed the love and grace of the Father. He embodied love and grace. On the cross, he opened up the way for all to live under the reign of God and to carry that message to all. We cannot add to it. We cannot improve upon it. It is finished. Let us live in the light of the finished work of Christ and proclaim that truth to a world in need. Let us pray. Praise to you, O Lord, for your finished work of salvation. The seventh words from the cross, from Luke 23, 46. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. In John's Gospel, Pilate speaks these words to Jesus. Do you not know that I have power to release you and the power to crucify you? Jesus' response was this. You would have no power over me unless it had been given to you from above. No earthly authority could lay claim to having power over Jesus' life and death. When he commended his spirit to the Father, he laid down his own life, and in the resurrection he had the power to take it up again so that we might rise with him. Lord, may I always confess your strength and deliverance so that I may experience the power of the resurrection. Let us pray. We entrust our spirit to you, Lord God, during our pilgrim journey here and when we enter our final journey home. Amen.